Well, it was prophetic whenever we changed our name to No Limits Church in 2016. It was a prophecy. The Lord changed our name because he wanted us to align with who we were to become by speaking it over and over and over. There are many examples in Scripture of God giving somebody a new name. I mean, think of Abraham. And what's interesting is it didn't happen after the person had changed. The name change happened ahead of time as a prophecy. So think of Abraham. His original name was Abram, which means exalted father. But when God revealed that he would be the father of many nations, he changed his name to Abraham. What's the difference? Abraham means father of a multitude. But at the time of the name change, what was going on with Abraham? He was old and he didn't have any kids, none. Yet every time his name was used, prophecy was released. Prophecy was released. Every time someone called his name, they were saying, father of many nations, Abraham, father of many nations. Every time his wife called him, she was prophesying. Every time his, anybody called his name, they were prophesying over his life. God has done the same thing for our church. We've been prophesying. No limits church. No limits church. Seven years ago, It's been seven years since he moved on our leadership team to change our name to No Limits Church. What a beautiful number that is. Seven years ago. He wanted us to release that prophecy every time we said our name. And now it's time for that prophecy to become reality. So what does a limitless reality actually look like? What does it look like? First of all, we come in line with what Jesus revealed in Luke chapter 9. One day Jesus called together his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority to cast out all demons and to heal all diseases. So living in a limitless reality means that we're no longer limited by sickness. We're no no longer limited by the demonic realm. We use the power and authority that Jesus gave gave us to cast out how many demons? And to heal how much sickness? How do we get there? By simply asking Jesus, just like the disciples did in the book of Acts. Here's what they said when they were praying. And now, O Lord, hear their threats, because they were being threatened. And give us, your servants, great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And what happened after they made this request of the Lord? Does anybody know? The place shook. The meeting place shook, and they were all... Filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. So our limitless reality is dependent on us being filled with the Holy Spirit. Not one time, but staying filled with the Holy Spirit. We must never hesitate to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Lord, give me a fresh filling. Holy Spirit, give me a fresh filling right now. Anybody want to receive that right now? Just raise your hand. Say, Lord, Holy Spirit, give me a fresh filling right now. I need it every day. And we must constantly expect Jesus to stretch out his hand with healing power. It's not us doing the healing, it's him. Let him do what he wants to do. Miraculous signs and wonders must become common to the people of God. I mean, it should become so common that when it happens, it's like, well, yeah, that's what my God does. I would venture to say that it shouldn't even necessarily be so amazing to us whenever these miracles happen because that's where our expectation is. This is what's supposed to happen. But yes, we are amazed by our God and how he does it. But we're not amazed that it happened. So what does a limitless reality look like? It's when we exercise power and authority. The power and authority of Christ on a daily basis to cast out all demons and to heal all diseases. What else? John chapter 14 says, Jesus says this, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. Come on, Jesus. You can ask me for anything in my name, and I'm going to do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Somebody say, ask me for anything. anything. And what's he going to do? He's going to do it. So a limitless reality requires bold asking. And not just boldness, but confident expectation that Jesus will do what we ask him to do. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. 
And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean. And our bodies have been washed with the pure water. So let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promises. Woo, I love that. Somebody write down that scripture reference. You need to go read that again. A limitless reality requires us to be bold in our identity in Christ. Bold. We must be confident in our right to enter the most holy place. We have the right to do that because of the blood of Jesus. We must go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. You see, we have to abandon those old religious mindsets. God, if it be your will. God, I'm only a wretched sinner saved by grace. I'm not worthy to enter your presence. Religious nonsense. Everything I just said is antichrist because it's the exact opposite of what Jesus told us to do. It is antichrist. We know God's will. Did you know that? We know his will. It's revealed through the life of Jesus. You don't need to pray if it be your will. You need to open your Bible, find out what God's will is, and align yourself with it. Don't ever let me hear you praying, God, if it be your will. Oh, Lord, I'm going to say, come on, buddy, let's get in some scripture. We're going to find out what God's will is right now. God's will is healing. No doubt about it. Align yourself with it. God's will is to meet all of your needs. Align yourself with it. God's will is for the church to be glorious. Align yourself with it. God's will is for us to live as kings and priests in this life. Align yourself with it. Align yourself with it. God, I'm only a wretched sinner saved by grace. I'm not worthy to enter your presence. No! No, your guilty conscience has been completely cleaned by the blood of Christ. The blood of Jesus has obliterated your sin. The blood fulfilled the consequences of your sin. The blood removed your guilt and shame. The blood freed you from your sin. You aren't wretched anymore. You're a new creation. Don't you dare blaspheme the blood of Christ by acting all pitiful. That is not humility, it is heresy. That's why I don't like the song Amazing Grace. Saved a wretch like me? No. It saved the wretch that I used to be. Here's how the religious spirit responds to a message like this. Well, that's arrogant. No, it's not. It's confidence. It's confidence. And it's not confidence in myself. It's confidence in the blood of Jesus Christ. So a limitless reality requires us to be bold in our identity in Christ. We must be so bold that we go right into the presence of God, ask him for what we need, and confidently expect he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Did you know this even applies to when you've sinned? You can go right into the presence of God, receive your forgiveness, and be cleansed in that very moment and get right back to where you were. Jesus is tired of his body wasting time over here in their guilt and shame and regret whenever he's already paid for it. He knows you're not going to get this perfect. So when you sin, what do you do? Go right into the presence of God and say, the blood of Christ is more than enough to cover what I just did. And I receive my forgiveness. Wash away this guilt and shame. I'm not keeping it. You start doing that, you're not going to sin as often. There's something about hiding from God that keeps you in sin. Have you ever noticed that? As if you can hide your sin from God. As if. Goodness gracious. What else? What else? Isaiah chapter 54. Enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your home, and spare no expense. For you will soon be bursting at the seams. Your descendants will occupy other nations and resettle the ruined cities. A limitless reality requires complete freedom from the poverty mindset. Physical resources, money, land, buildings, supplies, all that stuff, that's nothing to God. Nothing. We're the ones who make it a big ordeal. God's just sitting there waiting for us to think like he thinks about this stuff. 
The resources are ready, readily available. We hinder our access to the resources with wrong thinking. That's what's going on here. We choose to cling to what our parents said or, or how we were raised in poverty growing up, so that's got to be our reality, or what our pastor said in another church, because I've never said that, or what culture says, rather than what the Word of God says. I can guarantee you that Jesus never made a big deal out of money or resources. Never. He never did it. While the disciples are over there fretting about if they would, ever, if they would have enough, what did Jesus do? He aligned himself with the Father. When he was faced with feeding 5,000 people, Jesus didn't fret. He wasn't worried. He aligned his thoughts with the Father. You know what, Father? Resources are nothing to you. Everything needed is provided by you at just the right time. And what did God do? He fed the 5,000. He supplied all their need. And he did more than was necessary. There were leftovers. <laughs> Resources are nothing to God. They're simply part of the process of establishing His kingdom here on the earth. We have to use them on the earth. There's part of the process. God has all the resources. God has all the resources and desperately wants to get them to us. He's trying to get them to us. Quit blocking it with wrong thinking. In the verse we just read, it said to spare no expense when you build God's house. Did that rub you the wrong way? If it did, the poverty mindset is still at work within you. Are you bothered when the people of God have nice things? Are you bothered when the church spent money on something that you disagree with? Are you bothered that that big name preacher on TV has his own private jet? Are you bothered by money in any way and how people spend money? If so, the poverty mindset is at work within you. A poverty mindset clings to the idea that resources are limited. If we use money for a nice building, we won't have money to feed the poor. That's called limited thinking. You're acting like God doesn't have enough resources to build his house, sparing no expense, and take care of the poor in the process. Really? A limitless reality requires complete freedom from the poverty mindset. Anybody want to receive complete freedom from that today? Break the strongholds, Lord. Break them off. All right, what else? Isaiah 30, chapter, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15. Only in returning to me and resting in me will you be saved. In quietness and confidence is your strength. A limitless reality requires resting in the Lord. If you're striving and hustling and working your butt off to get things done, you will always be limited by what you can do. That's the way of the world. It's not the kingdom of God. Here's how Jesus demonstrated the kingdom for us. John chapter 5, Jesus explained it. I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father doing. Whatever the father does, the son also does. Jesus did not keep himself busy. He didn't try to impress people with how much he could accomplish. He didn't buy into the idea that those who work the hardest are the godliest. Nope. He only did what he saw the Father doing. That's it. I'm sure people expected all kinds of things from Jesus. But if it didn't come from the Father, he didn't do it. He didn't do it. He did not bow to the expectations of others. He did not bow to the expectations of culture. He stayed in a place of rest, trusting God. A limitless reality requires resting in the Lord because resting in the Lord reveals that you trust the Lord. When you're striving, hustling, working your butt off, it's because you don't trust the Lord. You don't trust him to provide. You don't trust him to reveal quick answers, quick solutions to the problems that come up. He can accelerate your problem solving if you'll rest in him. Or you can do it your own way, and you can strive and hustle and work your butt off. I'm telling you, you can do something in one minute that takes the rest of the world one month to accomplish, because the Lord comes in and he gives you the answer, but you have to rest in him. You don't hear the answer if you're not resting. And you might even be trying to earn something that's already been provided to you through the blood of Christ. Stop! 
Stop it. Abandon your own understanding and pursue God. Pursue God. Seek first the kingdom of God. I have this visual when you're seeking first. So you're, you're walking after the Lord. All the things are added to you. It's like a magnet. The provision comes whoop, right when I need it. And it just like hits, comes into your pocket right when you need it. But you're just following the Lord. That's all you're doing. And the stuff is coming to you that you need to accomplish what he's asked you to do. How many of y'all want to live that kind of life? Well, well I, got, I got some advice for you. Do it. Do it. Do what Jesus did. Decide right now, I'm only doing what I see the Father doing. That's it. In other words, you're going to wait on the Lord to reveal your next step while you rest in his perfect timing. I'm resting in you, Lord. His ways are better. His thoughts are higher. You know what that means? His ways don't align with your ways. His thoughts don't align with your thoughts. You have to abandon your own ways in order to pursue God's much better ways. And I can tell you right now, Our busy lives do not impress God. Our busy lives are not a reflection of Jesus. Our busy lives are a distraction from what God wants us to do. Slow yourself down. So how do we know what God wants us to do? That may be a question you're asking now. Like if I'm only going to do what the Father wants me to do, how do I know what he wants me to do? Isaiah chapter 52 has the answer. God said, but I will reveal my name to my people, and then they'll come to know its power. And then at last, they will recognize that I am the one who speaks to them. So to recognize God's voice, first, the name of Jesus has to be revealed to you. That's when you get saved. How many saved people do we have in the room? The name of Jesus has already been revealed to you. But then you have to come to know the power of the name of Jesus It's when you finally realize that the name of Jesus removed our transgressions, our sins, our rebellions against God. It obliterated it all. That's the power in the name of Jesus. And not only that, but the name of Jesus removed the consequences of your sin. The guilt, the shame, the punishment you deserved, it's been fulfilled by Jesus. That's the power in his name. And not only that, but in place of the guilt and the punishment, the name of Jesus gives you peace with God. It restores your covenant relationship with your heavenly father. That is the power. You realize how much power it takes to do this stuff? That is the power in the name of Jesus. And not only that, but the name of Jesus healed us. It mended us back together. It cured every sickness and every disease. It cast out every demon. The name of Jesus does that. That is the power in the name of Jesus. So once the name of Jesus is revealed to you and you come to know the power of the name, then at last, at last, you recognize that he's the one speaking to you. God has been speaking to you all along. You just haven't recognized it. But now that you have come to know the power of the name of Jesus, which many of you did at communion this last Thursday, you came to know the power of the name of Jesus. Once you know that power, you recognize his voice. Lord, that's you speaking to me. So a limitless reality requires resting in the Lord. It's when you get to a place where you no longer fret in the times of waiting. I'm speaking to you. How many of you all fret in the times of waiting? You no longer fret in the times of waiting. You don't freak out whenever he calls you to do something you're not qualified for. How many of you all have heard the Lord call you to something you're not qualified for? Really? Me? Okay. Okay. I'll do it. You simply live in this great peace. Peace, right? The Prince of Peace. You live in this great peace because you trust the Lord knows exactly what he's doing. Whether you agree with it or not. (laughs) That's the kicker, isn't it? You trust that he knows exactly what he's doing. Really, Lord, that's what you want me to do? That does not make sense to me. But you know what? Your ways are better. Your thoughts are higher. That's what I'm going to do. He knows what he's doing. (laughs) That's funny. Oh, have you ever argued with the Lord? Yeah, I had to repent for that. I'm like, Lord, how foolish of us to think that we can argue with you. Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah, the Lord is good. So our assignment for this church is to make Owasso a safe haven until Jesus comes. We're to possess the land and occupy places of leadership in this city to establish the kingdom of God in this city. 
this assignment will be fulfilled much quicker than we expect. It will all unfold very quickly. And get this, it's not going to be overwhelming. We could jump from one location to three overnight, and it wouldn't be overwhelming. We will conquer this assignment from a place of rest. (sighs) Not striving, not hustling, not sitting down for full day strategy sessions where we try to figure out what we need to do. We sit back and we trust, and the Lord reveals one step at a time, Katrina. One step, and the next step. You know, the reason it'll happen quickly is because this is only the beginning. This is the foundation that supports the full vision that God has for our church. Our church is positioned as a hub. It's a storehouse. In prayer last week, God gave me a vision where our church was a bright light on a map. And out of that bright light were these streaks of light going all over the world. We're a hub. We're a storehouse that contains the resources needed to send messengers of the gospel all around the world. Our resources will become so vast that we don't even have to hesitate sending people out. Someone comes to us and says, hey, the Father's called me to Uganda. We say, great, and we will immediately jump into action. We'll get on the phone. We'll purchase their property in Uganda that they need to build their house and to build their church, and we'll charter a private jet and send them on over there. We'll give them all the resources that they need so they don't even have to think about it. They just go over and they preach the gospel. The resources will be so vast, we can't even fathom it right now. Are we talking millions? Are we talking billions? We can't even fathom how, many, how much resource is going to be in this hub. If we need a jet, we'll just buy one. If we need more land, we'll just buy it. If we need to build a stadium, we'll just build it. I'm serious. No limits. So around the time that our 10 days of prayer and fasting started, Beth had a dream from the Lord. And uh, this was unusual for her. She doesn't have dreams very often. She'll have visions and she'll get prophetic words here at church, but dreams is kind of an unusual thing, so it made a big impact. She and I were standing in front of a beautiful tree with the Lord. It was perfectly pruned and it was healthy and it was growing. And the Lord said, you've done a great job with this tree. Thank you. But look around. And once he took our attention from the tree, we looked around and noticed the forest around us for the first time. And then he said, this is for you too. You weren't called to just one tree. So the Lord has graciously allowed us for the past several years to focus on our church, and that's what he wanted us to do. And it's beautiful. This is beautiful. This is healthy. It's growing. The Lord is well pleased with No Limits Church. And now it's time to look into the forest and clear the debris, prune the trees, nurture the land. We are a hub. We're a storehouse. And from this storehouse, we will go out into the world and establish exactly what the Lord has done here. So that's why I brought you this message today. I revealed how this prophecy, No Limits Church, becomes reality. Number one, use the power and authority of Jesus to cast out all demons and heal all diseases. Number two, be bold in our identity in Christ. Go right into his presence, ask for what we need and confidently expect him to do it. Number three, receive complete freedom from the poverty mindset. Number four, conquer God's assignments from a place of rest. And number five, only do what God reveals, nothing else. When God changed our name seven years ago, it was prophetic. He wanted us to declare his promise over and over again. And now, No Limits is to become our reality. That was good, wasn't it? Go ahead and smash that like button to help us get God's word out to everyone who needs it. And another way that you can help is by partnering with us financially. Your generous giving is what enables us to make a difference in the kingdom of God. Visit nolimits.fyi to give securely online. And hey, don't forget to subscribe before you go. 
Now let's go make a difference.